Um, we are live now with all your permission. I'm starting this session. Yeah. Good afternoon, everyone present here. I welcome all the participant doctors on today's session. Let's welcome today's speaker with great honor, none other than Dr. Varushali Varad, ma'am. Ma'am has done MBBS, DOMS, DNB, and consultant and director at Sai Nitrale and Specialty Clinic, Pune. And today, ma'am is going to discuss on a topic glaucoma diagnosis and management. Let me tell you overview of the topic. Glaucoma is a group of eye condition that can damage the optic nerves, leading to vision loss or blindness if it left untreated. It is often associated with increased pressure inside the eyes, known as intraocular pressure, that is IOP. To know more about this topic, I would like to invite ma'am and hand over this session to ma'am. Over to you, ma'am. Kindly proceed from here. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you for the kind introduction and uh, thank you for the opportunity. So, uh, good afternoon, everyone. So, today I will be talking on a diagnosis and management of glaucoma. As is correctly mentioned, this is a group of, uh, it's, it's not moving. Just not, I'll just again just click on the screen, ma'am. Just, just click on the screen once and then try to move. By using oh, side. Uh, yeah. What, right. so what uh, he mentioned, this is a group of diseases. This is a, not a single uh, entity that is called as a glaucoma, but this is a group of eye diseases and that causes the uh, damage to the optic nerve. So end point is what is the pathology is uh, there is always there is a damage to the optic nerve leading to an chronic progress. This is a chronic disease leading to an progressive loss of vision and ultimately leading to a blindness of disease. Why it is important to know about and be serious about the glaucoma is this is a not reversible, non-reversible disease. So we can control the progress of a disease, but we cannot cure the glaucoma. So early diagnosis, timely diagnosis and timely management is very important to stop the progress of a disease. So it is an optic neuropathy characterized by optic nerve head or Nerve fiber uh, layer changes with causes a gradual progressive decrease in a visual field and ultimately a blindness. So, this is how glaucoma progresses. So, first, there occurs an ganglionic cell death, followed by retinal nerve fiber layer changes, then optic nerve head changes, and second, then the visual field changes. Whatever may be the type of glaucoma, whether it is an open angle, closed angle, but this is how the disease progresses. First, there occurs the ganglionic cell death uh, because of the increase in a increase in the intraocular pressure is the only risk factor we can control or we can treat to reduce the progression of the disease then uh, or the stop the progress of a disease. So these are the types of glaucoma. Primary open angle glaucoma is the most common uh, glaucoma we see in our practice. Then angle closure, followed by angle closure glaucoma, then congenital childhood and secondary glaucoma. So these all topics, it is beyond, uh, you know, we cannot cover in this only half an hour. So I'll be talking mainly on a primary open angle glaucoma and angle closure glaucoma. So this is how disease progresses. So this is the normal vision we have, central as well as so in a glaucoma, different vision gets affected, which increase or it gets a, uh, progressively there is a decrease in a peripheral vision. Then we get in tubular vision, and then at, at the end stage we in stage we get a total loss of vision. So this is how uh, glaucoma progresses. So before going to the diagnosis, I'd like to uh, talk about the brilliance of an aquasimum. There is a fluid in an RRI that is called as an aquasimum which uh, circulate in an um, intraocular or the in our uh, eye system. Just like how blood circulate in our vascular system, this in aqueous humor, it circulates in our eye. This is produced in our uh, uh, body and it gets a print of the uh, iris through, through the pupil and then it gets drained uh, via the trabecular muscle into the scleral vein. Uh, venous uh, flow. So this is how aqueous humor flows like. So to maintain the intraocular uh, pressure at the normal uh, range, it is very important to have a drainage system uh, in a normal uh, condition. Depending upon the type of glaucoma, there can be a resistance to this flow at the trabecular network or here itself at the 
signal can be narrow, so it causes some resistance uh, to the flow of an aqueous humor, causing a stagnation of aqueous humor there, and increase uh, uh, that leads to an increase in a entropy pressure. So this is how normal aqueous uh, flow is. So now what I told about is, and we'll be talking mainly on an angle closure and open angle glaucoma. This is a comparative anatomical uh, difference in an open angle glaucoma and angle closure glaucoma. This is how angle is open in an open angle glaucoma and pathology is here in the trabecular mesh. But in a closed angle or narrow angle glaucoma, pathology is here. One, these angles are narrow, these structures are crowded, so there is a resistance in a, a normal flow of a drainage system. Second, there is a pupillary block or there is a close uh, approximation or you know, iris and lens. So there is a resistance to flow the aqueous humor uh, uh, from the ciliary body. It comes in front of the iris, so there is a resistance here also. This is how pathology of an open angle glaucoma and angle closure glaucoma is different. So management, it differs according to the type of the glaucoma. So now for the diagnosis of glaucoma, what is important is first is obviously history. So who are at the risk is elderly people. They are at the risk of uh, getting a glaucoma. Then people who has a family history of a glaucoma, they are more prone to get a glaucoma than who has a uh, blood pressure or the hypertension, they are again more prone to the uh, glaucoma. Or the hypermetropic eyes, this eye, eyeball is a small itself. So they're again uh, causes a crowding of a structure. Then these people are more prone to get an angle closure glaucoma. And to know the secondary glaucoma, we should in, uh, ask the history of in use of a corticosteroid or uh, uh, People who are using a steroid for a long term are more prone to get a steroid induced glaucoma or uh, secondary glaucoma. History of trauma, history of trauma also can cause a secondary glaucoma. So, for a diagnosis, proper history first, then uh, ocular examination, slit lamp examination, measurement of intraocular pressure, then angle assessment by agonioscopy. And this evaluation, obviously, with a slit lamp examination and with the help of 78 or 90 uh, diopter of a lens, then the this imaging or the photographs of a, or the scan of an optic uh, disc head, and most important is a visual field listing. So, diagnose glaucoma. We cannot just say that you have a glaucoma. We we need to do multiple uh, test or uh, examination to. Uh, come to the diagnosis of a glaucoma. So coming to the first is measurement of intraocular pressure. We have a normal range of intraocular pressure between 10 to around 22. It is measured with a different type of uh, instruments, but gold standard is an aplenesyl tonometry. Then other types of tonometry do uh, available there are, that is an air of tonometer or the non uh, tonopane tonometer, but gold standard is an aplenesyl tonometry. So how we measure is we put a drop of a paracane and then we, uh, instead of fluorescein, uh, I drop in that. And this is how we get an myers with the help of a applanation tonometry. This is incorrect alignment. Again, to get in proper um, thickness and proper uh, alignment is very important to get a proper uh, reading of an intraocular pressure. Excessive fluorescein, it will be fast reading on the thin. Uh, uh, Meyer again gives and uh, pulse reading. So we should have a proper uh, height and proper alignment of these Myers to get a uh, intraocular pressure. So this is how it looks like when we measure the intraocular pressure with a Goldman applanation tonometry. Then coming to a next stage. After the intraocular pressure, we measure a gonioscopy. So gonioscopy, this is a test to to uh, you know, to differentiate the type of the glaucoma before dilating the patient and before the disc evaluation. So this is done with the help of the special lenses available. That is a two mirror, three mirror, or size four mirror gonioscope lens are available to see the angle structures with the help of the gonioscope. So this is a drainage system from where the aqueous humor drains, drains into the uh, scleral uh, vents. So this is a second step to uh, the diagnosis of the how normal angle looks like. So these are the structures visible uh, with the help of gonioscope. First is a scleral or the scleral 
foundry is lined, then it is a trabecular network. But there are the two types of a trabecular network. One is non-pigmented, then the pigmented type of trabecular network. Then comes in scleral pore, and then is the scleral body. So if all these structures are visible, then that is called as an open angle glaucoma. When we call as an angle closure uh, glaucoma suspect is whenever trabecular network is not visible, then we call it as an angle closure glaucoma suspect. So, these uh, examination with the structure with the help of the goniscope is very important. Then again, we need to see whether there is an angle recession that is a sign of a trauma, uh, where there is a synecy uh, that suggests that there was a previous episode of, you know, raised intraocular pressure in cases of a narrow angle glaucoma, or where the, where, whether there is an increase in a pigmentation here in the type of glaucoma as well, that, that is um, pigment weight glaucoma. So this is the second stage of the second step to examine the patient, uh, patient with the help of the gonioscope. So if angles are normal, then we dilate the patient and then we do an optic nerve head uh, evaluation with the help of the 90D or the uh, 78 diopter lenses. Then what we see, in, what we should see in an optic nerve is what is the size of a uh, cup? Then with how is the uh, neuroretinal rim? Then how is the uh, disc rim, whether there is a thinning, whether there is a notching, and whether there is a presence of a hemorrhage. Hemorrhage suggests a disease in a, uh, is in a progressive stage, and when there, whether there is a uh, retinal nerve fiber layer. So first sign to appear in a disc is a retinal nerve fiber layer loss, then followed by the notching, or there is an increase in a, a cupping uh, of an optic nerve. So, uh, uh, coming to the uh, primary open angle glaucoma, uh, as I told, ki, this is a most common type of a glaucoma we see in our practice. Generally, this is a bilateral, but asymmetry is always there. One eye is more severe as compared to the other eye. Then it present it has a characteristic optic nerve uh, visual field changes with an uh, increase in intraocular pressure. Increase in intraocular pressure is is moderate uh, increase in intraocular pressure we, we get in this patient. And patients are generally asymptomatic. So we can miss this uh, glaucoma unless and until we uh, have a thorough examination when patients come for come to us for an refractive error checkup or with an other complaint. In a gonioscopy, obviously, and this uh, then there is a no secondary cause uh, of an intraocular pressure. So we have to rule out that. Then, um, as I told, why it is important because uh, this is a more progress, it, it is a chronic and progressive disease, and there is a patient that will be asymptomatic in first early stage. So, patient, uh, we need to be uh, more careful about uh, such type of diseases. So, this is how optic now looks like. This is an optic disc, this is an optic cup, and this is an optic, uh, this is a uh, rim or the uh, 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 rim of an optic nerve. So we need to see the how much is the CD ratio, cup disc ratio. So this is a cup and this is a disc. So this should be, uh, this normal is around uh, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 optic uh, CD ratio is there. We can actually, we can help measure it with the help of a slit lamp. It has an, uh, we can, you know, increase, uh, adjust the height of and the uh, height of the slit beam with the help of a slit lamp, and we can measure how much it is. So, in cases of a glaucoma, this optic cup gets elongated. This is how uh, normal or optic uh, gets elongated. Generally, there is a rule that inferior optic nerve uh, is bigger, followed by the superior I and ST. Uh, inferior. ISNT, inferior, superior, nasal, and temporal. This is how the thickness of an optic uh, disc is, or optic nerve is there. If this, and that's why this disc is oval, but this is an round. When we get an op oval optic cup, then we should suspect a glaucoma. Here we can see because there is a thinning here. So we, get, we are getting this optic cup uh, vertically oval. So this is a thinning of an optic nerve. So this is a comparison, optic, a normal uh, optic cup, and this is how the thinning of neuroretinal rim or elongated cup. This is a neuroretinal rim, elongated cup, we can see. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, 
uh, sign or the first what we should look whether there is an any defect in a nerve fiber layer. So this is a red free picture of an optic nerve. These are the uh, uh, red color you can see. This is a red free. So we have a yellow filter in our slip lab. So we can apply that and we can see this red free uh, picture of an optic nerve. Whenever there is a such type of defect in an optic nerve bed, we should suspect a glaucoma. And we should do a further examination or the further Yes, this is how this is a 0.7 cup, this is 0.9 cup, and this is how the total uh, optic or the glaucomatous optic atrophy looks like. There is a um, change in the course of a blood vessel, there is a shifting of a nasal, uh, uh, nasal shifting of a blood, uh, blood vessel, and total cupping of an optic nerve. So, this is an in stage of the form. So, we should pick up these signs as early as possible. So after, if you suspect the optic nerve, then we can do, uh, or, or, or we, we, if we suspect the uh, glaucoma, so we can confirm that with the help of the uh, optic disc uh, scanning or optical coherence tomography with the help of an OCT. So there are the different machines. So in my practice, I do this size uh, OCT uh, testing. So this is how printout looks like. OD suggests of a right eye, OS suggests of a left eye. These are the findings. How much is a reading of a dream cup? Uh, what is most important is we should look for this graft. So, this graft is of retinal nerve fiber layer thickness. So, importance should be given to the, this graft. There has to be a double hump. You can see a double hump there. So, your um, right and left graft should fall in this green area. If it falls in a yellow, that is an early stage. And if it is a fall in a red, that is a uh, little uh, further stage. That indicates a further thinning of an optic nerve. So if you, you, you can see this all. Uh, it, uh, no. So there is a no optic nerve. See, you can see here, there is a thinning and there is a dip in here of this graph here in the yellow and red region. So this... Uh, indicates that there is an optic retinal nerve fiber layer thickening as well as and neuroretinal uh, ring thickening. So this is how we can confirm the optic nerve changes with the help of a uh, OCT. So after uh, OCT, then we should evaluate the visual function. So why it is important to see the visual function? We need to know how much vision has peripheral vision has affected. So accordingly, we can set a target pressure to reduce the uh, intraocular pressure. And why OCT helps in an early diagnosis is because there has to be at least 40% loss of a nerve fiber layer, then it records in a visual field. So early diagnosis or early things we can pick up in an OCT picture. So normally we have around 120 uh, degree of a field of vision horizontally and around 90 degree vertically. So this much of the peripheral region we have along with the central region. This is how normal vision field is. So these are the glaucomatous vision field effects we can get according to the center of the seas, uh, nasal step or temporal waves. Then there is an superior arcuate defect, then inferior arcuate defect, or sometimes a learning we can get, and uh, it's related to tubular and blindness. So we can get such type of a uh, visual uh, in defect changes in and glaucoma. These are the automated parameter decision machine, how patient uh, we secure. Uh, we close one eye and then patient is tested for the uh, with an automated perimetry. It has a two type of perimetry. One is a Humphrey type and second is an octopus. In my practice, I use a Humphrey type of an, uh, perimetry. So what should we do once you diagnose with this patient is an open angle or primary open angle glaucoma, then what is our aim is we uh, should aim is to stop the further progress of a visual field and or the, we should stop the progress of a vision loss and we should stop the other changes in an optic nerve damage. So this can be done with the help of a medical line of treatment and then the surgical or the laser and surgical line of treatment. 
So coming to the medical line of treatment, it medical uh, line of treatment, it acts by two ways. First, it decreases the production of the aqueous humor so that intraocular pressure uh, uh, is lowered. And second, it increases the flow, outflow of an aqueous uh, humor. So first uh, is the topical beta blockers. So this is a longly tested. It causes around 40% of a reduction of an intraocular pressure. So uh, Tumolol is the most commonly used. Uh, if patient has a history of an asthma, we should avoid non-selective uh, beta blockers, that is a Tumolol. And we can use a cardioselective beta blocker, that is a betaxazole. Because uh, it has an these beta blockers has a side effect uh, of a bronchospasm or bradycardia or heart, uh, heart failure. This is a rare button. The um, bronchospasm is quite no. We can uh, we should always ask the history of an uh, asthma or the uh, bronchitis before starting the beta blockers. So we can use a cardio selective in that patient. So and if there is an any uh, uh, cardiac history, then also we should avoid the beta blockers. So, dosing each and VID or this stimulant, we can get uh, gel form also that we can use once in a day. day time. Uh, I prefer not to do it in a night time because you know uh, this has an effect on uh, stability. So then coming to an topical adrenergic agonist, most commonly the available is an bimodinid. Uh, and second is in combination of bimodinid and beta blocker. We can we have uh, uh, these other topical adrenergic agonist drop uh, we have in our uh, practice. So what are the side effects of an topical uh, those again systemic side effects in the ocular? But most common is side effect is and this is an Toxic reaction, most of the people get some capillary uh, you know, uh, reaction with uh, uh, alpha gain or using this These are the different side effects we can both take reason of blood pressure, primers, or the fatigue. So, though rare, we should. Uh, ask the patient. So, how we can reduce this systemic uh, side effect of this medicine is ask the patient to block the nasolacrimal duct and closing uh, eye after the putting the installation of the um, these topical drops because maximum absorption of these drops uh, systemic absorption occurs by with the through the nasal mucosa. So, we can avoid this side effects by uh, asking the patient to block the nasolacrimal duct. Then uh, is in carbonic anhydrase inhibitor. They are available in oral as well as topical. We are all know about the DREMOX. This is an available or we use in this type. So this carbonic anhydrase inhibitor is a DIMOX. So topical available is dorsolamide and brinzolamide. So in uh, easy cornea or dorsolamide, it affects the corneal endothelium. So we should avoid this in a uh, 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 in it's it's generally available. Uh, we should avoid it. And what uh, generally uh, always ask the allergic to the sulfa group of drugs because patients who are allergic to sulfa uh, group can be allergic to a dimox. Not always, but they can be allergic to a uh, dimox group of uh, uh, patients who are allergic to sulfa will, can be allergic to a dimox. So this is about the carb. Uh, Anhydrase inhibitor. Then is in prostaglandin. So now the uh, prostaglandin has a well mechanism of action. It increases the uh, aqueous flow as well as it decreases the aqueous humor production. So available prostaglandins is the uh, latinoprost, dimetoprost, um, and it has a longer duration of an action around uh, 24 hours. So we can we use it only once in a uh, day that is a night time. So convenience of the to increase the compliance of a patient this is uh, <clears throat> is more preferred. Then the prostaglandin uh, analog side effects are again congenital hyperemia and there occurs the 
high risk pigmentation after the long term use of uh, this prostaglandin analogs. Some uh, patient can be given eyelash rose or periocular skin pigmentation. Drug toxicity is more common for ocular reticular pimpicoid uh, complication. Drug induced OCP uh, mucous membrane pimpicoid is most common uh, with the anti glaucoma drug. So we should uh, see or we should see that. So uh, prostaglandin analogs are we uh, commonly use in the patients with the systolic macular edema and again an history of your EVATIS because this can increase the uh, EVAL uh, EVA reaction and increase the systolic macular edema. So this is about the crystal landed analogs. Now coming to the surgical procedure of glaucoma, laser tabacloplasty, uh, but uh, laser tabacloplasty uh, cannot control the eye pressure single-handedly. We need to give in supplement uh, medications, uh, patients who uh, we do in laser tabacloplasty. Then coming to in filtering sub surgery, most commonly surgery will do in uh, tabacloctomy to increase the, uh, to reduce the resistance in a tabacloplasty. Then um, drainage implants in a more severe uh, cases where this traps is field or there is an uh, uh, failure of a trap, then we suggest a drainage implant surgery that is an hematoval is most commonly used and then come to an cyclophotocoagulation. So this is a destructive procedure. When uh, eye is blinding, there is a painful blinding eye, then we use the, we use the cyclophotocoagulation to uh, reduce the production of an uh, aqueous humor. So this is these are the surgical procedures uh, how we can manage the glaucoma. Coming to the angle closure glaucoma. So this angle closure glaucoma is again an angle closure suspect and acute angle closure glaucoma. So we can prevent angle closure acute angle closure glaucoma by suspecting uh, in a high risk group and by treating them in an early stage because angle closure glaucoma is a painful condition. So in which patient we should suspect uh, an angle closure glaucoma is elderly. It is more common seen in a female, anxious patients, hypermetropic eye because eyeball length is short in a hypermetropic eye. So there is a crowding of a structure and there is a narrowing of an uh, angle uh, uh, that leads these patients are more prone for it. Angle closure. Again, family history of any angle closure glaucoma, uh, these, uh, these patients are more common to get an angle closure uh, glaucoma. So, in a history, or we should, in the uh, all, we should ask about this uh, family history and all. So, how we can diagnose the angle closure glaucoma at an early stage is with the help of a doing in gonoscopy. That I have already explained how uh, uh, normal. Angle looks like, and when we should suspect a, uh, uh, how is the uh, which structures are visible in an open angle glaucoma, and which structures uh, are not visible in an angle closure or uh, the narrow angle glaucoma. So, if there is an angle closure glaucoma suspect, then we can do an prophylactic peripheral iridectomy in an early stage. Uh, it again. Depends if patient has an anger closure glaucoma suspect with the help of a uh, with addition with the peripheral cyanicky, then we should do it in as early as possible. If there is a no color halo history or patient uh, is not uh, uh, any family history or any not any signs of uh, other signs of uh, anger closure or disc is normal, then we should call them for a frequent follow up. In that case, also suppose if you feel the patient is you know cannot uh, follow frequently, then it is better to, better to do an prophylactic peripheral iridectomy in such cases. So uh, this is an angle closure glaucoma suspect. Then coming to an acute glaucoma, so symptoms of an angle closure glaucoma is there is an severe pain, pain, redness. Then there is a blurring of vision or vision is drastically affected during an acute uh, glaucoma, then patient complains uh, around, around the lives because of the corneal edema. 
fifteen companies uh, there is a rainbow like you know lights or there are the halos around the light. Along with this, complaints headache, nausea, and vomiting. So whenever patient complains of such type of disease, you can examine these patients with the help of the torch light. Also, uh, if you don't, uh, physicians don't have any slit lamp at their clinic, then always examine the eye with the help of a torch light. Then, how does this eye look like? There is a corneal edema, there is a congestion, circumcinary congestion, pupil is dilated, not reacting to the light, and with the help of torch light, you can see the narrowness of a lighter, you can see the narrow, uh, shallow anterior chamber depth, and then finally we can confirm it with the help of the chromoscope. Um, and this needs a prompt management. So also the management of a, a fellow eye or examination of fellow eye is mandatory in this patient. So in an acute uh, stage, we need to uh, uh, decrease the pressure that it is missing here. Uh, we should decrease the pressure as early as pressure, uh, possible that we can do with the help of a systemic um, mannitol, IV mannitol. Uh, then that is given in a 1 to 2 milligram per kilogram body weight in a 30 to 60 minute. Uh, then oral dimox, 250 to 500 milligram of oral dimox we can give. Topically, pupil myotics, that is a uh, pilocarpine we can give. Timolol we can give to reduce the uh, acute attack of the uh, glaucoma. And once there is a uh, decrease in the pressure when cornea is a little bit of clear. We should do a peripheral iridectomy with the help of a uh, laser. Or if it is not possible to an, uh, do an arid, arid, peripheral iridectomy with the laser, we can do surgical PIRs. So uh, along not only that eye, but uh, fellow eye management is also important uh, in cases of uh, angle closure glaucoma. So we can do a prophylactic iridotomy in case of a, uh, this uh, acute angle glaucoma in a fellow eye also. Meiotics are not a substitute to prevent the attack of an uh, angle closure glaucoma in the fellow eye. So this is how surgical iridotomy look like. We do it with the help of a uh, ergon laser and there is a special lens available. We can do an iridotomy with the help of lasers also. So this is in short about the diagnosis and management about the glaucoma. So uh, I'd be happy to take any questions from the audience. Hello. Yeah, thank you so much, ma'am, for giving your valuable time and sharing your knowledge with us and making this session informative one. I definitely think this session knowledge is going to help all the participants who have joined this session. As I can see, ma'am, we have received some question. With all your permission, ma'am, shall we take yes. this question? Yes, please. Uh, first question is from Dr. Agarwal. He is asking, how is intraocular pressure, that is IOP, measured in the evolution of glaucoma suspects? See, uh, whether it's a glaucoma suspect or anyone, we uh, can measure the intraocular pressure with the help of an application tonometry, that is a gold standard. Other uh, tonometers are also available initially uh, before application there was a CWATS tonometer uh, then uh, air, air puff tonometer is available then tono pen is available but gold standard is gold standard is an application tonometer. I, uh, there was a picture also in my presentations we can measure the intraocular pressure with the help of a Goldman's application tonometer. Thank you so much ma'am for answering it I hope that Dr. Agarwal has received his answer. Moving forward, another question is from Dr. Oadesh Sahu. He is asking, is the arterial venous pressure pulsation related with extent of octave nerve damage or not? Uh, arterial venous pressure, uh, it, it, it doesn't affect the it, uh, uh, directly, it doesn't affect the optic nerve, uh, but uh, there is a, there can be a resistance to outflow. Uh, in a, so it uh, can cause in, uh, indirectly, but it is not. Uh, arterial venous pressure, it doesn't cause the uh, direct effect. 
Okay, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am, once again for explaining this question. And Dr. Ranju is asking, when should field tests be done for children? So whenever you are suspecting, but uh, you know, uh, childrens are uh, we uh, chair time is very important. First, we need to explain them if you are suspecting juvenile glaucoma or uh, uh, buccal is it, it's a different entity. There we don't do full uh, field test, but in a juvenile, we uh, when we this. Uh, Glaucoma, uh, what a juvenile glaucoma is, glaucoma in a early uh, or a early uh, age age group. So there we can do an uh, field test if you you are suspecting in juvenile glaucoma. In a juvenile glaucoma, always there is an high intraocular pressure, and uh, if you suspect, then you can do it. Only thing is, you need to explain them ki how is the test uh, is done and what uh, when you have to press it so chair time is uh, important whenever uh, you know patient is cooperative and whenever patient is able to tell about the visual uh, testing you can definitely do it maybe around uh, you know uh, 10 after 10 12 after 10 12 years patient is uh, able to tell about the perimetry, but chair time is very important to explain them how this test is done, how, when you should press it, when you are, you are not supposed to press it. So in a juvenile glaucoma, you can uh, do it like, you have to do it maybe, uh, I'll say it. In a biothermus, it's in childhood or the in, uh, early age, there uh, directly we need to manage the glaucoma. Okay, thank you so much, ma'am, once again for answering this question. Ma'am, I can see another question from Dr. Farooq Ahmed. He is asking, what is the point of view on the management of pseudophagic glaucoma management? So, pseudophagic glaucoma is, uh, again, you know, that you need to say is whether it's an open angle, whether it is a pigmentary uh, glaucoma, and accordingly, you need to, uh, what is the disc damage, uh, what is the stage of a uh, you know a field loss? Then accordingly you need to pressure uh, tar you need to target your pressure and you have to manage this. Pseudo fakia glaucoma is only this patient is operated for a cataract. That's why there is a pseudo fakia. But open angle uh, glaucoma can present in a pseudo fakia eye. In a pseudophagic eye, one thing you need to take care of and is uh, using a prostaglandin, uh, this uh, latinoprost and plus because uh, CME, uh, these patients can get with. Thank you so much, ma'am, once again. Uh, I hope that Dr. Farooq has received his answer. We will be taking last question for uh, today's session, which is from Dr. Ishika Shri. She is asking what can be the treatment approach and patient counseling for normal tension glaucoma? Hello, ma'am. Just come again with the question. Yeah. The question is from Dr. Ishika Shri. She is asking what can be the treatment approach and patient counseling for normal tension glaucoma? Correct. See, what is normal tension glaucoma? Here, I initially mentioned about the range of an intraocular pressure is between a 10 to 22. Uh, so, in a normal tension glaucoma, intraocular pressure is always normal. So in such patients, we should always measure the corneal thickness also because there can be a uh, uh, false measurement of uh, glaucoma. Whenever there is a uh, cornea is thicker, it measures the high pressure. Whenever cornea is thinner, it measures the lower pressure. So that factor we should uh, uh, measure if pressure is a normal. And being normal pressure, that is harmful to that type. So it is causing an uh, optic nerve damage. So even though pressure is normal, we should reduce the pressure below whatever pressure uh, patient is have. So drug of choice in a normal tension glaucoma is latinoprost or trabaprost. And generally, normal tension glaucoma is slow progressive. It's uh, if you detect in a early, then it is very well controlled with the help of a uh, prostaglandin. Okay, thank you so much, ma'am, for uh, sharing all your experience and answering all the questions, ma'am. As I can see, there is no more question from the participant in. If you allow, with all your permission, shall we conclude this session, ma'am? Yes, thank you. Thanks a lot for the thank opportunity. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. I hope to see you again with different times in coming times. Till then, take care of yourself, ma'am.